What's going on everybody out there and welcome back to another Dark Avenger comic book review episode and in this episode we are of course really late and we're really late because things have been super busy. There's been a lot of things going on at the house, a lot of testing going on by me as we are getting closer to 2018. The books in this video were released on November 22nd, 2017, which is nearing the end of November even though we are in the beginning of December. So yep. we are actually doing books that came out two weeks ago. We're still trying to play catch up with ourselves, and uh, we're going to really try hard. I believe this coming week, for the first week of December, things are light. So between the next two uh, episodes of this review, we should be caught up. But <laughs> testing still begins, uh, still continues, not begins, still continues. And we are actually going to be trying something a little bit faster this time. And uh, we are super late. So a lot of these books have been talked about, reviewed, discussed. So it's just um, going to be a brief feed. So we're going to probably do this a little quicker. This book, now I said last episode was going to be half the time. We kind of broke in at 25 minutes again. This time it's going to be even shorter as we're not really going to be going in depth with the books really at all. Except for the last three books which I want to talk a bit about. Physically. Physically. Uh, so, actually, really, mostly the last book on this list is something I really want to delve yes. into a bit. Until but anyway, we get into that. yes, until we get into that, we're going to try this for this episode. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 21. I really enjoyed it. I like the art. The artwork did change in the book, but it still fit the book really nicely. We find out about uh, the woman that was working for Zordon, that she kind of took the experience and is making her own version with um powers and whatnot and wanting the power range to be her muscle very interesting story and then in the end of course zordon returns so now it's going to be interesting to see where things go from this point I, i'm really enjoying mighty more power Rangers. boom studios really surprised me with this series and i'm glad that they have surprised me it's been a really great series thus far wwe number 11 i enjoyed this issue with roman yes. and john cena yeah roman reigns is still on the verge of uh trying to go after Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins of the Shield. Him and John Cena have a little fight that's going on after Roman Reigns want to confront Triple H about the whole suspension thing. And then after the whole talk about of everything, let's see where Roman Reigns go. And then the second story talked about uh, Luke yeah. Harper from and the Wyatt yeah. family with Randy Orton and, and that stuff. Uh, Savage Dragon issue number 228. Um, uh, this, this book, I, I heard a lot of talk about this book, yeah. so I had to look at it myself. Man, ah. Oh. Like, okay, like, I understand there's a new villain that's in the book, which he fa he fought with Malcolm. He said an issue, I think, yeah, 106 Yeah, but there's some or really super yeah. triple X mm -hmm. Don't let your kids get this I'm book. I'm telling you, if this continues, I am not going to read it, because that was just... I really wish there was a way, I, I hate that we're discussing this a little bit more in depth than usual, but I really wish there was a way that we can go back in time to when Malcolm's dad, the real, the actual Savage Dragon, yeah. was Savage, you know, Dragon. And well, we now could, he's dead now. I know, but I wish there was a way we can go back in time and get away from Malcolm and his girlfriend. No offense. Maxine. I cannot take his oh. girlfriend like she's i mean so... i have not read savage dragon in a very 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 long time i'm talking pre-malcolm pre-girlfriend pre-everything i after reading this book will mm -hmm. be staying very far away from savage dragon i, I think we need so. a return to basics and we need a, we really need a reboot or something not a reboot but we need to go back in mm -hmm. time and prevent maybe the father from getting arrested and the father, the father was killed. Yes, but he was arrested. Oh, first. he was arrested then. Yeah. We need to go back in time to when Savage Dragon was Savage Dragon and prevent ever moving happening. forward with Malcolm and Maxine as the main characters of Savage Dragon. I really think that this book has fallen. I mean, it was, it was bad before. I'm not saying it wasn't. There was still stuff like that in there, but it has fallen way far from the tree. Yeah, but skipping over that right. now. Well, I had to, to discuss that because I, I, know, I think it's important, just... and I also think that nobody should have a kid reading this book. Absolutely not. I would definitely say this is eighteen and over book. Yeah. No. I guess yeah. So. Don't yeah. even. Uh, yeah. No, I was thinking older, but whatever. The Shadow issue number four. Basically, you know, the Shadow is uh, now protecting the nurse that took care of him, and the nurse's sister that like, gets into trouble with this guy. And uh, it's just him causing crime, and now that he is on the wanted spree of being a domestic terrorist, or however it's called now, he is caught in the end with, with like, all red-faced and everything, and 
that's really how the book ended uh, for that part. So um, big. Uh, we're going into physical yeah. indies. Exo Man of Wash number nine, which I did review on Comic Frontline, and uh, the artwork. I really enjoy the artwork in this story. Like the book is like really phenomenal, and it's really just about you know how Arak is now uh, taking control of being the emperor. He tries to fight in war, and he wants to try to fix things that he didn't, that, you know, was messed up already. And basically, Skon is uh, having different ideas about uh, her ways of going on a different team and stuff like that. So, <laughs> there might be a feud between those two going on. And that's something else. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ghostbusters 2, issue number 4. I've already read issue number 5. I did read 5, too. Wow. But, anyway... So it's just them going after. The I think it's really collectors. a lot of the same. It's a lot of the same. In the end, long story short, the collectors absorb um, uh, whatever that guy's name is, and Darius. 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 Dunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the turtles come face to face with their mother at the very end of the book. That's that's really the yeah. the path and that the, this and book the, went and Michelangelo on. Michelangelo saved Peter Venkman, and uh, Raphael went back into his own body with uh, getting out of Ray, and then like he said, they met their mother. At the end, and I was saying to myself, is this a trick? And, well, I have to find out on the next issue for that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or TMNT Universe, issue number 16. Basically, backstory with the Tricera... Oh, God, what are they called? The Tricera... Uh, the Triceratons. And it's their backstory, training. It involves Zog a little bit, his family. Um, the beginning... Uh, begin, the beginning of the rebellion against Krang and the others. It's really interesting. Again, TMNT Universe is like your backup stories for uh, what are go what's going on right now in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the series. So we're at the Triceratons on Earth right now. So the backstory or the backup story for with TMNT Universe is the Triceratons. There's a secondary story, the Triceratots, which is kids of the Triceratons. Interesting stuff. Again, I feel like TMNT Universe is a perfect... Ba now it feels like a perfect balanced backup to the main TMNT book, and that's a good thing. But at the same time... If you're going into this book looking for more turtles, you're not getting more turtles. You're getting more whatever. You know, we had Kitsune. Now we're having the Triceratons. Before Kitsune, it was... Um, shoot, I forgot who was before Kitsune, but I was losing interest in that. And then before... The turtles were only in the very first story arc, and after that, it's kind of had supporting characters in TMNT Universe, uh, or characters that the story's around. So again, it's more of a building behind a building world, and I think they did promote it as that. At some point, so. <laughs> Spider-Man Deadpool issue number 24. This book was, like, kind of, like, my least favorite for this week because all it really just talks about is that Spider-Man, as I've been saying, is trying to take Deadpool into jail, and there's all this big, big commotion going on, and then they meet Chameleon in the end. Th th that really was it. That really fun was stuff. the whole story. Fun stuff. Of that, yeah, fun stuff. Very fun stuff. I'm going to be so glad. Uh, I'll tell you guys right now, I made our DCBS order for January. And I'm very happy to announce that we did not order any more of these lenticular covers that have Thank uh, you. come out from Marvel because I just can't. And there are more, actually. Whoa. There are more coming out. I know that there's one coming out for um, one of the books I'm reading now. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway... I'm done because these lenticular covers, man. I'm covering November's books. Obviously, I'm getting December's, but I think December's is very, very short. So I'll be doing a video on Comic Frontline covering all of the November books, which includes this and one more book that's in uh, this week's books that I have, and then I'm done. I'm I'm not going to be showcasing these books anymore. There's no point. After November, anyway, I think all of, most of the books are out, and then it's just like, I think there's four or five that came out in December, maybe yeah. eight at most, and they'll all be in the haul videos. So, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, issue number 13. Or, basically, guess what? Annie is now a teenager. And you see that she's training with Wolverine. You know, her and her dad are kind of... You know, her dad is kind of dealing with being the father to an older teen now. The artwork changed. Uh, I don't believe Ryan Sigmund's doing the art in this book. I forget who the artist is that uh, that's doing the art in this book. Here we go. Mm, yeah. Where is it? That's the present. Here. Artist is Nick. Nick Roche. Oh, there we go. Why did I look at this? Yes, Nick Roche. And I don't know, the art really didn't feel right to me. Annie is still the main character telling the story. 
Uh, and then they go to Coney Island to kind of celebrate. And he's not happy with it. And the lizard attack. So regular family time out. And it's, I don't know. I feel like the book is kind of changing into mostly. An I don't know why. I just. This was definitely the weakest of the Renew Your Vow series so far. Annie's older now, and I feel like she's becoming the main focal point of the book. So basically, we're going into Spider Girl, kind of. But we have the family aspect, so it is different. And Pete is technically still young. I'm sorry, i got to talk about this book because it's an important book. And Pete is still young, so technically he is still Spider-Man. It's not like Spider Girl. But at the same time, and they're looking for a new name for Annie... I don't know. I just feel like it was better when she was a little girl. There was a funny joke thrown in that it feels just like last month. Annie was a little girl. Now she's a teenager. I, I feel like it's just them, you know, it's them introducing Annie now as a teenager. How Pete and Mary Jane are dealing with that. You know, her going back to school. And also wanting a new name. I don't know. I feel like this is really, I don't know where, where this book's going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but we'll see. Punisher the Platoon, issue number three. It's you mean Punisher still... Platoon? Yeah, Punisher the Platoon. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know how either. But anyway, it's just really just all talking, talking, and just Frank Castle, B or LT, however they said his name, in the story. And then you have these... Uh, I can't remember what her name was. Like, sister who's still against the Americans and wants to take them all down. And it's really just, I understand it's the platoon and it's about his story about being in the army, but is this a mini series? Mm -hmm. Thank God, because I don't know. It's part of the Max line too, because, so it's not part of the main Punisher books. Because it I'm, is part of the Max line. Just right. to point out, it is so, a it's a Max book. Right. So thank God it's a mini series because if it was ongoing, I don't know. Long story short, with all-new Wolverine issue 27, Dawkins back. Dawkins finds out and reveals that Laura's mother is exactly what we figured she was. A fake. Uh -huh. And just a way for the Orphan X to spy on Laura, find out about the blade or the sword that we saw at the beginning of the story arc that Wolverine took to fight Dawkins. And they're looking for that blade so they can kill off all of, the, all of Wolverine's bloodline. So now... Uh, I think Laura sent Captain Marvel to get it. Captain Marvel gets taken down. But the people who are the Orphans of X now have the blade. And this is going to play into Laura and uh, Dawkins finding the shield. Remember that I showed you in the beginning there's a shield? But really that's the long and short of it. It was a pretty quick read once you get past Laura kind of losing her shit against Dawkins. Killing her mother whom she finds out is not her mother. And then tries to prevent... A fight between, you know, Captain Marvel from getting jumped, but the Orphans of X already know where the blade is, so. Luke Cage, issue number 167. Luke Cage, like, I feel so bad for him because this Ringmaster dude is just really just bad news. Like, with all this uh, magic power, uh, psychic power that he uses, and then this guy helps Luke Cage remember who he is because he knows exactly what's going on. Uh, artwork's pretty good in this book. And then as he tries to uh, snap out of it and everything, things just go from bad to worse, going into now the mind. And word says that last person I went in never came back out alive. Hmm. Into the mind we go for Luke Cage. That's going to be interesting. X-Men Gold issue number 16. Remember that one shot where we got all that uh, background on that alien character that they thought was a mutant but wasn't? Well, his people come to Earth to rescue him. And he doesn't even want to fight. He doesn't want to destroy Earth. He doesn't want to attack Earth. He doesn't want to rule it either. Uh, he just wants to leave and go back to his home world and get revenge for being sent to Earth to begin with. However, the X-Men are kind of caught in the middle of this. And Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler end up getting caught on the ship as it headed back to its home planet. So now it's up to the X-Men to save them. We also get to see a little bit of Kitty, Peter, uh, Colossus getting it on, getting together. And obviously this was a relationship we all knew was happening, especially after they turned Iceman gay for no apparent reason. So, really good book. I'm enjoying it. Uh, we'll see where X-Men go next. Obviously they're going to space, but yeah. <clears throat> Nightwing, the new order, issue number four of six. Nightwing was rescued by his old former colleagues of the Titans. And also Lois is apparently a Blue Lantern. And she's teamed up with them. And now Nightwing is teaming up with them 
to save his and Starfire's son. And we also find out that the son might not only be uh, immune to the isotopes that stop his powers, but he might actually be the cure and the ability to give back the powers to all of the people that Nightwing stole it from all those years ago. You see that there's still tension between him and several other members of the Titans. Uh, but obviously he's teamed up with them in the end to save his son. And they get caught by Mr. Freeze at the end of this book. We'll see where things go. Batman Creature of the Night Book 1. I'm sorry. I thought I'd be interested in this story. It's interesting. I'm not saying it's not interesting. And there is another book. There's I thought I kept. Thing oh yes. It's a, it's a thick book. It has its own spine and everything. But at the same time, I'm I've been re I have so many mini series for Batman right now that I'm reading. The next book is called Boy Wonder, so obviously there's you know it brings in a Robin. It's about a boy who same thing loses his parents whatnot, but he doesn't. I don't know if he becomes Batman. I kind of got bored halfway through and I just stopped reading. Artwork too kind of just threw me off. Um, Kurt Busiek writes it. I liked. I've read several books by Kurt Busiek. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm not interested in more Batman miniseries right now. So um, I would recommend checking it out because again, I'm just. I've got so many other books that I'm reading right now, and this was a thick book. This was a really. This was a lot to read, in, in uh, especially with all the other books that I had to read this week. And I don't know. I kind of fell out of it. I might give it an, a second shot, and I'll throw it in next week's review or maybe the week after remember guys i'm trying to play catch up also so big books like this if it doesn't make an impact within the first half of the book nine times out of ten i'm just going to stop reading it and uh i would say try it out personal opinion i'd say try it out you might like it personally i just don't have the time to really delve into a book that big but i am getting issue two i believe with boy wonder so we'll see where it goes we'll see i'm going to probably try to read it again i just it's been just a hectically busy week that was actually one of the last books I had to read. And actually, this book came with this week, this past Wednesday's books. I actually read this digitally, this episode. And I was going to actually skip it and put this in next week's review. But I figured I did read most of the book now, so I just threw it in the review in case I don't get a chance to finish reading it for next week's review. Again, something to try out for sure, but mm, not my cup of tea per se. Batman is not exactly the number one superhero I like to read in Elseworld Tales. That That's kind of personal to just Superman for me. So the fact that I'm actually enjoying White Knight is because it's a really good series and they've actually added more issues to it. So for me, White Knight is kind of my Elseworld Batman right now. This kind of is just like an extra like Superman ink where if I get the chance, I'll finish reading it. Just like America is 19. Yeah. I don't know how I, because I was trying to get the book up. So it's Prometheus against, uh, Vixen, whereas uh, the other team is uh, Lobo and Black Canary are facing against Afterthought, and you know it doesn't really look good for uh, Black Canary and Lobo. But then afterwards, um, the um, is it the Adam? I think we're gonna end up like, going yeah. twenty five minutes. I'm watching the time like, as we're yeah. The new Adam comes in and saves everything, so. I've got three Wait, books that I want to discuss. We're going to go that 25 yeah, minutes. Yeah, and uh, everything after. that uh, was uh, fought, well, it looks like a big major explosion happens or about to happen. So, yeah. I'll get through the next one quick. No, it's fine. I'm just saying it's funny no matter what we do, yeah. no matter how fast Teen we go. Transition number four. Still 25 minutes. Yeah, and it's basically just... Damian Wayne is actually turning over a new leap by being somebody that actually says he needs help. From the Teen Titans, and you know they come and help him with this big tidal wave that's going on with um, Kid Flash, that's in it as well. And we all know how Damien feels about that. I really like the artwork, though, especially that. Uh, did Kid big Flash page. leave Deathstroke's? Titans? He did leave Deathstroke's because um, he really. It explains more in the book. Like they could uh, read it to find out about that. So then, uh, in the end, he just uh, says to Kid Flash, you know that. Uh, with all that's done, he uh, respects him, and they did, like, the handshake. So, actually, um, you know, with all that, and then Amiko leaves him. But I think Amiko has some for him. This is what Ooh, I want to show you. That's interesting. Yeah, all right, him, next is going to be Super Sons. Right. The Super Sons of Tomorrow. The story begins in Superman issue number 37. So, I thought Tim Drake wasn't around with the Robin suit. Yes, he is. Uh, getting a detective now. Oh, oh we're going to get Remember, to Tim did come back, though, in Detective. I forgot. I forgot. 
Nine but years. yes, now, Nine Tim years. is back. The arc, he's finally returned. Detective Comics 969, by the way, everybody, 969. Uh, Tim is back, and he finally reaches out to Stephanie, who actually is talking with Anarchy still while he's in jail. But yes, Tim's back. I don't know. I don't feel like Stephanie's characterization is still there. I feel like she's still dependent on somebody. She thinks that Tim's back. You know, he can go to college. She wants to go to college with him. She's so happy. We're gonna. Be, I'm going to be discussing these next three books, guys. So we're going to go hit that 25-minute mark because we've got five minutes to 25. And um, Tim's like, yeah, I just got to finish something first. And Tim basically is finishing the Belfry and working with the crew. But then we find out from Batwoman that Tim's made the decision that he's not going back to school. That he's, instead of fighting against, you know, being part of the Bat family or ever becoming Batman, he's trying. He's going to embrace af after the effect, the events of the previous story arc. He decided instead of fighting against it, he's just going to go with the flow and he's going to control his own path. So he's not going to become the next Batman, but he wants to be able to control his future and destiny in this world. So basically, he's given into being Red Robin and that this is his life and that. Fighting against it or trying to be against it is just not going to happen. But Stephanie doesn't know that. And when she does find out, I feel like that's where Stephanie's going to be joining the other crew. There's a new mayor who's not too happy with Batman, who's got information from the first victims. And now Anarchy and the others are free from their prison. And now they're going to be going after Batman and his family. Stephanie's been converted by Tim. But I feel like when she finds out Tim's not going and he's been lying to her... This is where things are going to finally hit the fan and spoiler might leave the group once and for all permanent. This was a heavy book. This was heavy and wow. I, I'm super excited, by the way, for Action nine, uh, 1000. We are so close. 992. Guys, we are only a few months away from Action Comics 1000. I believe Amazon already has a pre-order for a variant cover and it's already like 50, 60 bucks for the variant cover. So it's going to be crazy from DCBS. I can't wait to see what they have. I'm not going to be paying any more than cover price for the thousands, but I will get every cover that is like at the two ninety nine price range, $5 at most. Um, but that's for then. This is now. So this is the aftermath of the Oz effect. And Superman doesn't believe it's his father, jor -El. So he's trying to find every which way to prove that this is not his jor -El. And he's losing it. And Batman actually comes to him and gives him the whole story about the button. You know, I was... The same things happen. Somebody's messing with time. It's not just you. But Superman wants proof. Because he said, if that's my father, then that means everything I was was a lie. But I feel like there's a little plot hole here. And I love Dan Jurgen's writings. Action Comics is my number one favorite DC book right now. My number one favorite comic in general reading. Uh, this book I always leave... For a second to last, like I said, the only reason I read that Batman book was because we got it this week. Um, but this was the last book I read as far as these this week's books go. Um, I was too excited with Doomsday Clock, which is next. But anyway, the little plot hole here is Superman found out that the staff was controlling his father. Or it was kind of making him think the way he was. Because if you remember, after he broke the staff, that's where jor kind of snapped out of it a bit. And said he was proud of his son and that... He was wrong and tried to warn um, Clark a little bit. So I feel like Clark is kind of forgetting that. And I don't know if that's going to play into something later on. But he wanted proof. He wanted to know if it was his Jor-El. If it was his father that was taken from his Krypton and not from the multiverse. Because DC characters apparently know full well about the multiverse. So he goes to Green Lantern to get the... Because obviously the Green Lantern Corps has all the records. So they have the record of Krypton being destroyed. He wanted to see if he was the only one that survived. There was a hiccup in time, go figure. So Clark decides he's going to use the cosmic treadmill, long story short, because Lois encourages him to find out the truth. That's the way, you know, that's the only way he'll know, but he's still a good person no matter what. She calls him Clark even because he was raised by the Kents no matter what. So he ends up using the cosmic treadmill to go back in time to Krypton to see if it was that it was his father that was taken by an unknown force. And that's where Booster Gold shows up. Only seconds too late. And now the time stream, because of Superman's need to know, is in danger. Obviously nothing's going to happen with the time stream, but it's going to be really cool to see the team up with Booster Gold and Superman. Because obviously now Booster is going to go back in time. Doomsday Clock. It begins. It begins. And I love how this has... When, when Jeff Johns talked about this, he said it does not. it's not a Superman-centric story. I will agree it was not. This whole issue had this new Rorschach. It is Rorschach, but isn't. 
and I like how they introduce that. I really don't want to show too much of this book because you got to read it. I'm giving you guys the abbreviated even there. There's this guy who is Rorschach but isn't at the same time. And he frees these two people because his um, partner, his working partner at the time, and um, we find out, spoiler alert later, that it's Osmandias, uh, wants, to, wants them so that they can, because they're good at apparently finding people. And he and uh, Rorschach and Osmandias hire or bring the woman on, but she wants her husband there. It's, it's a whole couple. you got to read it to find out. And there's little teases of Owl Man, uh, what do you call it, the... Um, Oh God! The owl ship, you know, owl man. I believe it was owl man. I feel like I'm night owl. I'm sorry, night owl and silk. See, they're dropping things in here. Like I guess they they really did merge the Watchmen into the DC universe because they're talking like this happened in in the past, like actual history, and they show the owl, uh, what do you call it, uh, ship and everything. And Osmond Dias comes out and says he didn't, you know, Owl, Night Owl didn't want to come back with Silk Spectre, but they wanted to hire them because they want to find John. They want to find um, Dr. Manhattan because he's the only person that can fix the mess that's going on. And I think they that, long story short, I think that he's the reason, we all know that he's the reason for all these changes. So now Osmond Dias and this new Rorschach, but isn't new Rorschach, want to find Dr. Manhattan to try to fix this, or I don't know. And then we go into Superman. Now, this is why I think Jeff Johns kind of was, he kind of fibbed, but didn't fib, because it does obviously have a very strong, I mean, 90% of the book is Osmond Dias and Rorschach, or just Rorschach and then Osmond Dias. But then, the last couple of pages of the book go into Superman's dream, and he has his first nightmare ever, and it's about his parents the night they died. The, reliving it in his dream as a nightmare and I feel like this is kind of a tease to the fact that the parents death was kind of set up by Dr. Manhattan because why would it be so important number one why would it be why would they choose now to show this to Clark and give him this because he's never had a nightmare before but now he has and it's about his parents death I feel like that what's going to happen here with Doomsday Clock is we're going to somehow find a way to save or find a way to bring back the Kents, possibly, in Superman's realm. Now, they show other the, the next few covers. There's a few little tidbits at the end. And I feel like maybe Jeff Johns is right. Maybe the first issue deals with Superman. Then the second issue has Lex Luthor on the cover. Maybe the second half is Lex Luthor. Third issue has Batman. Fourth issue, again, has Rorschach. Fifth issue has the Joker. Maybe every one of these books is going to focus on a different character. It just so happens Superman was the first one up. But I feel like the dream, the real reason why Jeff Johns threw that in there, the, the nightmare that is um, plaguing Superman is because, obviously, I don't I don't want to say that it's there because they're saying, yes, this was done because of the change, because we all know it was. But I'm wondering if this is a teaser for the future where after Rebirth or after this whole ordeal with Dr. Manhattan, they might actually find a way to bring back the cancer, even through Doomsday Clock prove that this happened because of events Dr. Manhattan put into action. That's why Clark's having these nightmares, or this first nightmare ever, to kind of start the wheels towards the undo button. And obviously we've already had hints about Connor and we've already heard that Young Justice might be coming back, so there's hints of undoing you know, Connor's re uh, New 52, which then was erased anyway when Rebirth happened. So the return of actual Superboy. So there's a lot of things that I feel like we're slowly going to be getting back. One thing is the hint here that maybe the Kents will be coming back. I don't know. We don't know. But Osman Dias and this Rorschach, new or old, are in the DC Universe. They're looking for Dr. Manhattan. And somehow Superman's going to be involved in I don't know what other book. This is a very exciting time um, for me. I'm more excited than nervous, honestly. Really more excited than nervous. It's a 12-issue miniseries. So we will be talking about this book all the way until this time next year. Yeah. We will be talking Doomsday Clock all the way till November of 2018. And yeah, 2018. And I believe the Rebirth event... No, I think they're going to be doubling up Doomsday Clock soon. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know. No, I you think it's know. only once a month. No, I think it's only once a month. I don't know. But we're going to be talking about this for a long while. For 11 more issues. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Yep. All right, and with that, that's it for this review, guys. 29 minutes. 
even going fast through our other books, we still end up with that 20. I feel like I we're just know. jinxed. But well, we did have 20 books this week. We had 20 books. Well, and we that went, week. Well, that week, that's true. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I guess we're just jinxed. No matter how fast we try to go, we always end up at that 25, 30-minute mark. So I apologize, everybody. 30 30. minutes. Take care, everybody. Yep. Have a great week. We hope to see you guys soon with the next episode. I mean, we're going to try to read these books as quick as we can and get you guys this review as fast seriously as we can. Try. We're going to seriously try. But till then, guys, take care. Keep reading. Keep collecting. Feel free to let us know what you thought about the books that we reviewed this week. Likes, dislikes, agree, disagree, recommendations. We love hearing from you guys. Let us know what you thought about the speed for certain books. I guess towards the, the when we started the episode and towards the middle, then as we got into the books that we like talking about, that's where things kind of got it. A little bit more in depth. Do you like it that way? I mean, we, we would love to hear your guys' opinion. We've been trying all these different ways. I'm testing all of this month several different things that some of you guys know about. Some of you guys are, you know, you're seeing all these different things that I've been doing throughout the year 2017 is testing. What you guys don't know is certain things are actual deep tests going on right now to see what exactly will stick and not stick for 2018. Uh, and yeah, there'll be videos. There'll be a video at the beginning of the year talking about all that. Take care, everybody. Yep. Have a great week, and we'll see you guys soon in the next episode. Hey, everyone.